Hey everybody, JB the Ranch Mechanic coming at you today from the road on my way to Salt Lake. Uh, I had to go out there to run some errands anyway, so I'm meeting my wife out there and take her out to dinner. Since we didn't really have a chance to celebrate our birthdays or anniversary properly last week, so. But that's not the purpose of this video today. Um, the purpose of this video is kind of a sad one. The message I want to share with you guys is something that I'm hoping someone out there might need to hear. Um, I'm going to put the suicide prevention hotline at the bottom of the screen here. Right around there. And I'm going to leave it up for the duration of this video. And uh, the reason for that is because of a situation that occurred at the ranch, well, not at the ranch, but right next to the ranch last week. Um, this kind of thing gets to me a little bit. But I was out um, just checking our pivots and stuff, getting stuff ready to be turned back on for the season so we can get some water on our crops. And I noticed a vehicle parked on the side of the road right across from one of our pivots. Like, not on our property, but right there, like on the border. And uh, that happens a lot, you know. We have people that, you know, come out, hunters will come out and they'll glass our pivots to look at all the deer and the antelope and stuff. And we have photographers come out to take pictures and that kind of thing. So it's not uncommon to see vehicles parked on the side of the road. But something about this vehicle kind of you know, I went into cop mode there again for a second and the hinky bells went off. And uh, I was in my side-by-side, -side, so I, I left the pivot, opened up the gate leading to the road, and then I approached the vehicle from the front. We were facing each other. And the vehicle was unoccupied. But I was looking at it. It was unlocked. There was tons of personal belongings in it. Lots of clothing, a guitar case, some school books, some personal books, um, notebooks, things like that. You know, it looked like someone had been either living in the car or had basically moved into it and kind of left their entire world behind there. Um, and something about it, you know, just didn't sit right with me. I didn't, I don't know what it was, but I kind of mulled it over for about, I don't know, 10 minutes while I was going about my business. Went down, checked another pivot, came back, vehicle was still there. There was nobody around. Uh, so just it didn't seem right to me. Something seemed off about it. I don't know I don't know what it was exactly that kind of gave me that sixth sense about it, but I ended up calling the sheriff's office. And I told him that the vehicle was there. And I relayed the license plate to him and the description of the vehicle and everything and the location. And they said thank you, we'll send a deputy out to check on it, and that was that. Um, they came back out the next day. And they said that they were not able to find the RO, which is the registered owner. But later on that day, they uh, came back again and said that they got a missing persons report for the owner of that vehicle. And they walked into the foothills adjacent to where the vehicle was parked. The young man who owned the vehicle walked up there and killed himself. Shot himself in the head. And that kind of, I don't know, it, it's, it hit me a little differently. You know, after being in law enforcement for so long and then getting out of it for, you know, not wanting to deal with stuff like this, and then moving out into the middle of nowhere where you don't think you're going to have to deal with it, having it happen right on our doorstep, was uh, very sad. And I struggled with anger issues and depression for the majority of my life. And I've been where he was at. I don't know what demons he was battling, but, you know, I've heard a lot of people say over the years that, you know, suicide is a very selfish thing. And, you know, how dare they, you know, all they're doing is just taking the easy way out, blah, blah, blah. Well, if you're a person that believes that, first of all, shut up. You need to check yourself, okay? There is nothing worse than getting to the point 
where you feel like the world would be a better place without you in it. Do you have any idea what you have to go through to get to that point? How much anguish you have to be in to feel that way? To where you even start contemplating suicide? People in that state genuinely believe that they are doing everybody a favor by removing themselves from the equation. I'm telling you right now, if you are depressed and you are thinking about that, please call the number at the bottom of the screen. Talk to somebody. You can be, it can be completely anonymous. You don't have to divulge any personal information. But talk to somebody, okay? There is no worse feeling in the world than being where that young man was before he ended his own life. It's a horrible way to live. It's a terrible situation to be in. No matter what you've done or what demons you're battling, there is help and there is hope for you and anyone like you who's in that situation. So if you are depressed and you're thinking about this, I'm talking to you right now. Don't. Don't do it. No matter what you're going through, no matter what you've done, no matter what you think you deserve, the suicide is not going to do anything except make a problem completely unsolvable. Because you take away your options at that point. There's no chance of anything ever getting any better once you're gone, once you leave this world. So I'm sorry for the depressing message today, guys. But I think it needed to be said. This last year has been hard. It's been hard for everybody. There are people out of work. There are people who really don't see any light at the end of this tunnel because nothing seems to be changing. Things are getting a little bit better, but it has been hard. Jobs have been lost. Families have been ripped apart. It's been horrendous for a lot of different reasons. So I just want you to hear me when I say... Again, if you're thinking about taking your own life, please don't. Please talk to somebody first. Please reach out. Please try to get some help. Call the number at the bottom of the screen. Because there are unintended and unseen consequences from, from suicide that the person committing the act doesn't realize at the time. I didn't know this young man personally. I don't know his name. Even if I did, I wouldn't be sharing it here. That's his personal business. But his death will have an effect on me for the rest of my life because every time I drive past that area of the road where that car was sitting, I'm going to look up into that hill and realize that was where he took his last breath. And this is not about me. I'm not trying to make it about me. I'm just saying that death is hard for everybody. It's never a solution if you initiate it yourself. So please, again, if you need help, seek it. Call that phone number. Get the resources that you need. They're out there. So anyway, guys, I'm going to go spend some time with my wife and my kids and try to have a good weekend. I urge you guys to do the same. I hope you do have a wonderful weekend. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. And I'll catch you on the next one. See ya.